nano you know blockchain technology they're gonna apply the DAG structure it's kind of effectively you know taking kind of architecture to compete with Ethereum but since December 2020 This is my proposed strategy. So I only recommend asset to the Bitcoin, the old urban project, which is in G6 categories. If you want to deepen your understanding about my proposed strategy, please check out my other video about my proposed strategy. So here's the link here. Okay. And it plays nano major machine category is here, number five, birth. In this industry layer, since Ethereum, the second largest blockchain project next to Bitcoin, they're gonna position it here. So it's pretty harsh competition, it's happening around here, okay. And also, I'm gonna apply the six anarchal points, so starting from the pain points, products, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. And for each, I set the 5.0 point here, so the total score is 30.30. And also, if you're gonna deeply understand about how I'm gonna analyze, please check out my other video about my Arcoin investment strategy. And here's the link here, okay? Then let's talk about paper analysis. So here's big pain points on the blockchain industry. DApps needs burst for product development in their early stages. Let me tell you the background. So correct internet infrastructure is controlled by tech giants such as Google, Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. Then while building P2P based crowding computing resources required insanely tough work for DApps players. Currently, if you want to develop any kind of applications, like for a smartphone or something, Usually you're gonna use Amazon Cloud or Google Cloud, centralized cloud computing services, right? For blockchain, we're not gonna use the centralized cloud computing services because we have to develop the decentralized you know, cloud computing resources to run applications. So if the DAP player wants to develop their own applications, they have to aggregate their computing network resources on their own efforts, which is pretty tough work because that player have to focus on other elements too, such as marketing or growth hacking stuff, you know, any kind of business development still. So from this perspective, it's pretty tough work for the DAP player to aggregate community resources with their own efforts. So if someone like Bath player aggregate community resources for a DAP player, it's really, really helpful for them. It's a critical solutions for their pain points for DAP player. Okay, and to help you understand this point, we have pretty big analogy from the internet industry. We call it competing big bang. Then from 2006 to 2007, we mainly experienced two big innovations, NOS and Apple OS. And the first project, it's pretty similar to Amazon NOS. Before the NOS, if the app developer wants to develop their own applications, they have to learn data center solutions and every month from their start, they have to pay around 3000 or $5,000 per month. It's pretty expensive, right? But what amazing innovations done by AWS, they only charge second base one. So if you are active user base of your own applications, like in a card game or SNS application or something, if your active user base is pretty much small, let's say 100 active users per month or something, you only need to pay $30 or $50 per month. It's much, much cheaper than using data center solutions. That is why a lot, lots of app developers motivate to develop their own applications on internet space, especially, you know, Apple iOS smartphone market. With these combination of the innovations, internet industry experiences second largest growth in its history. And then we call it competing big bang. Okay? So from this perspective, the bots played a pretty critical role on the blockchain industry, especially for the mass adaptation with the killer application for both B2C and B2B space, okay? And the second one, product analysis. And before moving to the detailed stuff, let's check out the history overview of the Nano. So the original name of the Nano is Rail Blocks, while it started to develop by Colin Lumaho in 2014 and initially launched in October 2015. 
So this is one of the oldest projects on the blockchain space. And it uses the block lattice data structure where every account has its own blockchain, like account chain. This was the first cryptocurrency created on DAG structure. Also, they got a part of the Delphi model and a focus on digital payment market. And then along with the 7 million nano developer fund, this fixed the total supply to 133 million nano as of now. Okay, so it's a limited supply model. And then on February 2018, Big Rail announced it's shut down after being hacked and accounted loses of 70 million nano. It's kind of a huge problem for them. Okay. And then this is a system overview of the nano. So here is P2P Convenient Resource Network here, just like the Ethereum. And the nano bus platform, they're going to apply the public blockchain and the delegate proof of stake model like Tron and EOS, also Cosmos too. Then they're going to aggregate those community resources with this bus architecture and they provide these community resources for DApps player here. Okay? And one more thing I want you to understand here before moving to the detailed analysis of this product stuff is difference between centralized cloud and decentralized cloud. When we call the centralized cloud, they mainly have three components, transaction system, storage system, and anarcho system. Transaction system, they got to process any kind of your, your activity on application, such as sending message to someone, receiving money from someone. The storage system store those transaction data as a history. And if application player wants to use those data for search engine or recommended engine something, they got to use this Anacron engine here. Once we're going to build the decentralized cloud here, when we call the bus project, which means actually transaction system here. Why? Because blockchain technology is a transaction system. This technology is not for stretch or not for anarcho system. So in long term, Every single bus project has to scale up their software solution from this transaction system area to stretch an analytical area because they have to compete with centralized private computing system like AWS. Okay? Then here is volume calculation analysis as always. Then Nano is here and I pick up the three major bus projects here, Ethereum, Flow, and EAS. And the first thing that I want you to pay attention to is here, fast move advantage. Because Ethereum is a world fast bus project. So that is why they can take this advantage. No other player can take this advantage. Okay? Then EOS, kind of good example, effectively competing with Ethereum. Because EOS already integrated storage system and an Oracle system. Ethereum does not support this area yet. This is how the EOS to compete with Ethereum. Another effective you know, model to compete with Ethereum is actually Flow. Flow take the vertical product strategy model. So they have developed their own application here. NVIDIA Hotshot is a good example. Ethereum doesn't have any kind of own applications. So with the vertical product strategy, they try to differentiate with Ethereum, especially with NFT focus. Flow focus on NFT market. I'm gonna give you the detail later, but this focusing point is pretty effective one because Ethereum focus on DeFi market. And about this reason, I'm going to tell you the detail later, okay? Then once we are at the Nano, we simply say, they don't have any kind of unique technical feature to compete with Ethereum or product strategy stuff here. Because before the December 2020, Nano's you know, blockchain technology, they're going to apply the DAG structure. It's kind of effectively, you know, technical architecture to compete with Ethereum. But since December 2020, Ethereum transformed their system architecture from proof of work based one, which is applied to Bitcoin, to proof of state based one. And then they're gonna apply the sharding technology at the same solutions. So, narrow project rooting their computer with Edge. Okay, that's the things we can learn from here, right? And here's another critical point I want you to understand here is platform compressions between Ethereum and other bus project. This data from 2019 version, but we can learn many things from this graph. This orange area is a pure market capitalization of the each bus project. And the blue one here is aggregated market cap of the all dApps running on each platform. It's pretty crystal clear that Ethereum is a dominant player here. Then these kind of dApps congestions eventually bring 
kind of critical problem for the Ethereum is this one, gas cost fee. So Ethereum gas cost fee is rising continuously. December 2020, the reason they're gonna transform their system architecture from proof of work based one to proof of stake based one and apply the sharding technology is because to decrease their gas cost. But even after this event, gas cost still rising. Why? It's because DeFi. Let me tell you why. It's this one. So this is a major bus active stat as of March 2021 and the Nano, Ethereum, Tron, yes here. And the key things I want you to pay attention to is here, unit price per transactions. As you can see, compared with Tron, yes, unit price per transaction on Ethereum, much higher than others. Why? It's because of DeFi. Because DeFi is an asset management solution. Most of the users that are gonna use DeFi is retail investor or institutional investor or hedge fund player. Which means that minimum asset moving side is pretty much higher than these two players here because Tron EOS more focused on you know, game application or gambling application or something. For these user characteristics, paying a higher gas fee to achieve higher transactions is not a big problem. That is why gas cost fee with Ethereum is increasing. Okay? Which means for Uniswap, Aave, or MakerDAO, for those you know, DeFi player, high gas cost fee is actually not that serious problem because their customer can pay such high gas cost fee. So that is why you know, some of the retail investors claim that in the near future, a lot of you know, DeFi player or DApps player, they're gonna leave Ethereum. I don't think it's not gonna happen because Ethereum already have a certain level of powerful network effect model to run the DeFi solution in this market. Because Uniswap, Aave, all this, they're gonna support the ERC-20 token or ethereum related token system. Once they're gonna left Ethereum, Uniswap, Aave, they're gonna lose this competitive edge. That is why they're gonna never grab it, okay? So from this perspective, I don't think these DeFi player never move to a nano project, okay? And then one more key thing about nano project I want you to understand here is this one. Crypto payment infrastructure layer is seriously crowded with the tech giants. So as I tell you guys previous slide, looks like nano project focused on digital payment market. It's okay, but serious, but the serious competition is happening here. Visa, PayPal, Square, Binance, those players now so seriously focused on consumer and the retail payment market. Nano have to compete with them. It's pretty tough competitions. That's the things I want you to understand here, okay? And then number three, team analysis. So here's key member, Nano Foundations. Colin, founder and CEO, he's an ex NNBM software security engineer at the Crowcom telecommunication company. And he got the BS of computer science at the St. Claude State University. And the second, George Coxon, CRO, ex senior account executive at the Nonsense London. And she got the BS of evolutionary anthropology at the University of Liverpool. And they have past 10 members here. Simply say it's young team, not that bad. But the key point is, with these members, they have to compete with PayPal, Visa, Square, Binance. That's the things I want you to understand here, okay? And then number four, execution power analysis. Then this is a major vast active stats as of March 2021. And then here's Nano, East, Tron, EOS, all the data from Ducks.com. No traction data, and then no traction data of the Nano project yet. And then here's actually additional things I want you to understand here that it's about market focus. Ethereum, Tron, EOS, they're gonna focus on B2C DApps market. One of the critical survival why for the Nano project, they're gonna set a different market focus to compete with Ethereum. It's about B2B DApps market. But on my analysis, even Nano project focus on B2B DApps market, I don't think their project has pretty much high potential in long term. I don't think so. And I'm gonna tell you the reason why here. It's this one. So this is a great reference from private community market to some Nike versions. And these, these are the major centralized competing player 
in this market. Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, Alibaba Cloud, Salesforce Cloud, IBM Cloud. And here's critical difference in these six major players. It's market focus. These four players, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Alibaba, they got to focus on B2C application market. Salesforce IBM focus on B2B application market. And the key point I want you to understand here that why these market share difference happening here? These four major player takes over 60% of the total market share. These two players, Salesforce and IBM, looks like a pretty niche player in this market. Why? It's because decision-making process of the user operations, especially application business perspective. Let me tell you why. So this is a Chasm theory, one of the major well-advanced tech marketing theory for the mass adaptations. They have five key user base, innovator, early after, and the chasm here, and the early majority, late majority, and late mass here. Then every single new technology experiences these lessons for their mass adaptations. And especially this red mark area is pretty important for the mass adaptations, especially for crossing chasm here. Then in this area, I'm gonna say still the B2C application focus is much more advantageous than B2B application focus. Why? It's about decision making process. Let's take an example about Uber and Airbnb. No one stop you to use Airbnb or Uber, even your mother, right? You can decide whether you use their new application or not immediately with your own decisions. That's a unique feature about B2C applications. But B2B application market is pretty different. Let's take an example about Salesforce. You are the sales guy at the Salesforce, and you're gonna to try to sell the Salesforce to some kind of you know, IT company or something. Then inside these organizations, they have to build a certain level of consensus to use the Salesforce or not. Sometimes you have to get the approval from the CEO. Sometimes you know all the team members have to build a consensus inside. That is why the need time to acquire to one user it's much longer than B2C applications, such as Airbnb or Uber. That is why growth speed of the B2C application focus is much faster than B2B application focus. This is the main reason these market share difference eventually happen in a cloud company market. Okay, that's the things I want you to understand here, right? Then one more good example to help you understand it, this point is Algorand. So Algorand focus on B2B application market. Then once again, look at the team member, simply say it's all star team. For example, Silvio, founder, and he's a professor at MIT, and he's a Turing Award winner. Turing Award is a Nobel Prize in computer science. And Steven, he's a CEO, he developed the Unicorn IT Startups. So pretty successful serial entrepreneur. And other member also pretty capable talents too. Even with these you know, also team, Algorand have been so seriously struggling to get their tractions to compete with Ethereum. Why? Because their market focus is B2B applications. Okay? So even that project focus on B2B applications, like Algorand, I don't see the bright feature for them. That's the things I want you to understand here, okay? And then number five, token economy analysis. So here's the token economy design matrix which I made and the major margin calorie of the nano is here, bus and blockchain OS. And especially the network effect model is pretty important for them in long term to compete with Ethereum. But currently, I cannot confirm any kind of network effect model of the nano project yet. For your reference, let me share about network effect model of the flow because they're gonna build a pretty effective model to compete with Ethereum. And the starting point is this one, blockchain game developer who prefer cheaper gas costs for NFT transactions. Because unit price transaction with NFT is much smaller than DeFi transaction size. That is why, you know, those players, especially, you know, game developer, they want to use the flow bus, okay? That is why they can build a certain level of the active user traffic here. And then at the next step, Flow planning to develop the oasis for the blockchain game, shared NFT on all game on Flow boards. Oasis is a gaming universe on Harry movie of the you know, Ready Player One. This is kind of my favorite movie. 
please watch that if you're interested in. So inside there, there are a lot of variety of the gaming zone. But the amazing things in this universe, you can carry your own game virtual items to other game platform. Alright? So this kind of unique feature eventually bring to the floor that more selection of the blockchain games with less friction cost to play on the multiple gaming zone. It's pretty cool stuff, right? So that's why they can provide a better customer experiences. Then this is their primary growth mechanism, especially with the DApps growth. By leveraging this growth mechanism, here's the second growth mechanism, DAO plus asset growth. My expectation for the flow is this one, require staking, the, require flow staking for shared NFT, you know, playing gaming stuff on this, you know, Oasis on the gaming zone. I think also I'm going to expect them to develop something there with a DeFi solution inside there. But these unique feature, eventually they're going to provide more limited supply of the flow token for the speculator. That is why they can achieve stable proof of stake model. This stable proof of stake model eventually bring them stable asset value growth. So that is why they can achieve much more better customer experiences. So that is why these two growth engines is correlated each other, help each other to scale up their ecosystem as a network effect model. So not a project. Also, they have to build same type of the network effect model to compete with Ethereum. That's the things I want you to understand here, okay? And the governance DAO, very critical because Ethereum is seriously developing right now, okay? And then number six, hype cycle analysis. So here's got the hype cycle analysis, blockchain technology 2020 versions, and the major matching category of the Nano project is here, blockchain pass. This industry category has pretty much high potential next to five to 10 years. But here's time limits, because once Ethereum, they're gonna achieve perfect cost platform, including Stretch and Oracle Engine, no other balance player cannot defeat Ethereum ever. Especially minor players such as Nano, it's pretty tough to survive in this market anymore. From this perspective, I'm not gonna have high expectation for the Nano project because they're already a niche player in this industry, okay? And the final item, total score. And about pain points, without any question, it's 5.0 because bots is the most critical industry layer for the blockchain industry, especially bots adaptation through the application business stuff, okay? And then about product, 2.0. Because now we have Ethereum 2.0. Before the Ethereum 2.0, their DAG structure and proof of stake model had a certain level of technical edge, but Ethereum 2.0 already have proof of stake model and also sharding technology, so nano project losing their technical edge. That's why 2.0. Team level, young team, not that bad, but think about you know technical perspective, I don't see the great computer science talent inside this team, so 2.5. Execution power, kind of same thing, 3.0. We cannot confirm any kind of actual tractions of this project on a DAP.com or any other data sources on a blockchain space, so 3.0. Talk economy, 3.0. Because I cannot confirm any effective network model like from bus project to compete with Ethereum. That's why 3.0. Hype cycle, 3.5. Blockchain pass category has a pretty high potential in this industry. But here's time limits. But think about you know these you know capability area here, team and executional power. I cannot have high expectation for the nano project, so 3.5 here. Okay? So the total score is 19.0 point. So my minimum investment criteria is over 25 points. So from this perspective, I'm not gonna recommend investment in nano project token nano, okay? All right, so that is all this time. So I'm gonna make this video for the educational purpose. So I cannot guarantee you any kind of certain level of investment outcome with this video or any other video that I make. But I truly hope that my video will practically help you guys understand about high potential of the crypto and blockchain industry. So I'm gonna make a lot of in this video on the crypto and blockchain industry. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye.